What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I'm really excited to bring you my review of the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max processor. So as someone who's had a few months with the 16 inch MacBook Pro now with the M1 Pro processor, that was already a computer that absolutely impressed me. And this is one that I actually went on Apple's website and spec'd out completely custom, pretty much to the brim because it's gonna be my daily laptop for the foreseeable future. And I've been waiting for it for quite a while and finally had some time to spend with it. And I've gotta say as someone who is really liked my experience with the M1 computers since their initial release in 2020. This absolutely did meet my expectations and is essentially a computer that I've been low-key waiting for for so many years now. I know I mentioned this in the past, but I actually started my YouTube career on a MacBook with like the Core 2 Duos. And eventually over the years, I also upgraded to like the i7. And then I went up to a larger computer such as the MacBook Pro 15 inch, and then moved on to like desktops and iMacs for a little bit before going back to like a laptop such as the MacBook Pro 15 inch with Retina display and the i7 processor. But I'd say for like the last like five years, the MacBook has definitely had a very like rocky experience and the performance has kind of been inconsistent and really hasn't met the expectations until the announcement of the M1 last year. And even then, I felt like even though the MacBook Air M1 was my favorite computer to date overall because of the power, the battery life, the consistency, and everything, I've been waiting for a pro model like this for quite a while, and here we finally have it. And I know the lead times of the 14-inch MacBook Pro right now is pretty insane, but with the M1 Max processor, this has essentially allowed me to edit all my videos on the go in 4K, 5K, and even 8K resolution if I really want to from a color grading perspective in Final Cut Pro, having all the stuff that I want open um, in like Chrome and all the general tasks that you do expect out of a laptop, but at the same time, even be able to handle like photo editing on top of all these other tasks. So just to kind of sum it up before we go into like the details, this really is like the total experience, but because so many people have asked for a review of the 14 inch in particular, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about kind of the comparisons between the 14 inch and the 16 inch and how they're able to handle. So beginning with the hardware of the MacBook Pro 14 inch, I've got to say that like right out of the box, it definitely was noticeably heavier than the previous generation MacBook Pro. And especially if you're coming from like the MacBook Air, I do feel like it's a bit of a different market, but by no means does it feel like bulky. I definitely noticed the weight a bit more on the 16 inch model. And that is because it's obviously got like a bigger form factor, but also a larger battery as well. And that is an area that Apple has really, really improved on this generation of MacBook Pro across the board. Just to get the size here, the actual thickness of the M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch is actually pretty close to the previous generation. It is just less taper and smoothed off. And as a result of that, they've been able to fit the internals and rearrange them a little bit. Also focus on the thermals, but of course the battery life that I just mentioned. So generally speaking, some of the areas they're really gonna notice is just like around the edges, it's nicely squared off. And the screen definitely has a bit more of an enclosure to it. But behind that is obviously the tech when it comes to the XDR display that is built in with the mini LED technology. For this MacBook Pro 14 inch, I actually went with the Space Gray model, and I've traditionally gone with Space Gray on all the computers. This generation though, I feel like looks equally as good in the silver option. Before it was kind of without a doubt, anything that was available in Space Gray I would pick, but the silver model definitely like, I don't know, it just seems to go well with the way that the chassis is actually designed. But at the same time, if you didn't like open it up and see that big notch and the keyboard and everything, from the outside, it does look very similar to like the older generation MacBook Pros from like 2015 prior. So I don't know. I feel like the space gray one right here is a pretty good decision, but I know some people were kind of wanting me to compare the colors and give an opinion on which one I personally like more. So I'm pretty happy with this choice here. The other big talk about the design though is in the ports. And on the side here, you do have the MagSafe that is able to charge up to about 100 watts. And what I've really liked about that right off the bat is aside from having that great 
great MagSafe support and being able to utilize that, you can still charge your device via USB Type-C and there's so many options that are out in the market already with the gallium nitrate technology that is able to give you that wattage that the MacBook is able to need on the go in all different sizes. I always love it when like third-party accessories are able to kind of innovate and produce like multi-function tools such as like the USB and like the six-in-one tools that we've seen so far. But beyond that, you have your two Thunderbolt 4 ports as well as your headphone jack. And on the other side, you also have an HDMI 2.0, another Thunderbolt and an SD card slot. SD card slots are something that people still use all the time. And especially when you're creative in like photography and videography, a lot of like the consumer and prosumer cameras still use an SD card slot. And personally, I love to take some photos on like a portable camera, like the Fuji or like the Leica. And that is probably what I find myself using um, the SD card slot for the most. And it's just so nice that it's back. I do agree that SD cards are not as prominent as they used to be um, with a lot of cameras that have like higher resolutions like moving over to like CFast and CF Express um, as we've seen in like the Canon, the Reds and also in the Blackmagic lineup. But nevertheless, there's still a huge market of people who still use SD card slots. And in my opinion, the more ports, the better. And I would say like the overall port setup is really, really adequate for like a portable setup. I can definitely have like a few like SSDs connected out of it and the option also upgrade the internal storage of up to eight terabytes with a super fast speed is also really nice. When it comes to the display though, this is another area where I feel like this computer has it all. It is a Liquid Retina XDR display, which essentially on paper has all the same features as Apple's Pro Display XDR that costs a lot of money. But for anyone who like edits photos and videos and deals with color every single day, I'm pretty sure the general consensus from the professional industry is that the Pro Display XDR is worth its price point and it's still actually relatively affordable, which sounds kind of funny, relative to a lot of like the enterprise grade displays out there, say from a company like Sony. In this year's M1 MacBook Pros, you have the 1 million to 1 contrast ratio, a max brightness sustain of up to 1000 nits and up to 1600 nits in HDR. And on top of that, it also adapts the pro motion elements of 120 hertz refresh rate that you find on the iPad and the iPhone. And all that comes together to not only give you an incredible experience just from like a visual perspective with like the colors, the sharpness and like the richness and in addition to that, the brightness, but just like navigating through the general menus and being able to see the adaptive refresh rate is really, really nice. But I will say not many apps are actually updated or optimized to really take advantage of that just yet. But it does show that the direction of displays that are gonna be in pretty much every MacBook moving forward is gonna have that. And so all the apps are bound to be able to support that at some point. The colors are also absolutely incredible. I know I can only speak for like the field of video and photo because that's what I typically do on this computer, but having your photos up, it not only gives it like a very accurate representation, but a very honest one as well. The way I kind of put it from like a video and photo perspective is that the better the display you're using to edit your content on, it essentially shows you the worst that your image is ever going to look. If you're like color grading a video, editing it, or doing like any retouching or color correction from a photo perspective on a display like an XDR, as soon as you publish it and somebody opens it up on like a traditional monitor or like a smartphone, it is gonna look that much better because you have created the content on potentially the most accurate representation possible. When it comes to like the bezel and the notch, so I've already talked a lot about that, so I'm not gonna like drag that on, but honestly, I don't really care that it's there. It has more screw real estate than before at a very minimal size increase when it comes to the width. I will say though, with the notch, it would be nice to have like face ID, for example, or center stage. And so hopefully that'll be implemented in the future, but the quality improvement just from like a resolution and ISP perspective is very welcome. Before we move on though, I wanna give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Clean My Mac. And this is a program that you should absolutely install on your computer the second that you get it, because I've pretty much had it on every single MacBook that I've had to date. When you're running all the daily tasks on your computer, whether it's email, having these large attachments, Chrome, and also all the general tasks, your computer does have a lot of built up files that can not only take up a lot of space, but also cause your computer to slow down. And what a lot about Clean 
my Mac is that it is just such a beautiful interface, but it is able to run a general maintenance scan on your computer and with one click, it will clean up all the files that do take up a lot of space. But on top of that, there's also a great feature such as the malware removal, which is able to scan your MacBook for any like miners, viruses, adware, and remove them instantly. And another one that I also need to use a lot is Space Lens, which gives you the ability to see which files are taking up the most space on your computer. I've actually been a paid customer of Clean My Mac for so many years now, and I can really recommend it to you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop a link down below if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself. So up until now, we've talked about the design and the display, and those are two things that you're gonna notice as any consumer, whether you're just using the computer casually or doing very intensive tasks. I think right off the bat, that is gonna be a huge improvement when you open this computer up and bring it around with you for the very first time. And on those two aspects, I'm absolutely impressed, but as someone who also does a lot of video editing and typically relies on a ton of computer power, the processing power of the M1 Pro and the M1 Max processor is really ha what has me excited for Apple's future here. So the computer that I had a chance to test out the past few months was the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Pro processor. And that was more so on like the mid spec. It had a 32 core GPU, the standard 10 core CPU, and it also had about 32 gigabytes of internal memory. So from a processor perspective for this one, I did max it out to the brim with the M1 Max processor with 10 core CPU, 32 cores of the GPU and 64 gigabytes of unified memory because I wanted to test out just how much power does the Max option have for a 14 inch computer. And even though like the 16 inch M1 Max is understandably gonna be more powerful due to its thermal setup and having more room to breathe and being able to clock at higher speeds, the reason why I went with the 14 inch is because I'm always looking for how much power I can get on the most portable setup possible. We've done that with cameras with the Red Raptor being a little bit of a smaller form factor but having an 8K resolution. And I wanted to do that with the M1 MacBook as well. I'm either gonna have like a crazy setup with like the Mac Pro and like the dual XDR displays or I wanna be able to have everything in the size of like a 13 or 14 inch computer which is kind of why I was using the Air for the past few years. The biggest question that a lot of people were probably asking though is, is there a difference between the M1 Pro and the M1 Max processor? And I'm going to say that even for professionals out there, most of the time you aren't gonna notice the biggest difference out there and it is very specific to the field that you're in. It's not to say that like the M1 Max is not powerful, but it's the fact that the M1 Pro is already very, very impressive. The M1 MacBook Pro was already one of the fastest computers that I've ever used. And in fact, it was really able to go like back and forth with my Mac Pro in terms of beating it out in performance. That Mac Pro for reference has a 16 core CPU. I think I've got like 128 gigs of GPU in there and 256 gigs of RAM and at the price point of the maxed out M1 MacBooks compared to the Mac Pro, the performance itself was just more optimized. It was able to run better. The renders were actually able to process faster, but when it came to raw export, they were generally quite comparable. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money when you're specking out the computer, I would say that if you go with like the M1 MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro option with say like an upgraded memory of up to 32 gigs, you're already gonna be absolutely impressed by the performance. And whether you throw like 4K footage at it, 5K, 6K, it's still gonna have no problem at all. The reason why I still don't regret my decision of spending the extra money on the M1 Max is when it comes to actual exporting in like DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro 10 and the actual render times, there is a noticeable improvement when you compare the speeds of the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. It simply has more cores, more memory to be able to work with and for processes that do need that when it comes to rendering and exporting, that is gonna make a difference. But in terms of like everyday tasks and just cutting in the timeline, doing color grading, I didn't notice any drop frames, whether it's the M1 Pro or the M1 Max. What I can say is easily the most impressive thing of this entire MacBook lineup from the power perspective is the fact that they don't throttle at all. So whether you're plugged into the wall, um, into like a MagSafe or like a 100 watt adapter or you're on the go, there is no compromise at all, which typically laptops already have some issues when it comes to thermals and like thermal throttling and like underclocked speeds as well as when you take it off the charger, it runs at a completely different mode. 
And with these computers, because of Apple's own architecture and their optimization, there is none of that problem at all. But one thing that you do want to keep in mind, and the reason why I do recommend the M1 Pro option over the M1 Max option for a lot of people out there, is when it comes to the actual battery life. I would say in like medium tasks with a good balance of like everyday stuff as well as some video editing, I was able to get anywhere from about six to eight hours on the 14 inch model, which is not really anything impressive. It's better than before, but not really by much. And I would say like in terms of battery performance, it was kind of as I expected. With the M1 Pro option for the 14 inch, I've heard that you're probably able to get about a two hour improvement on top of that, which is relatively significant in my opinion, if you're away from the charger for most of the day. The 16 inch MacBook Pros obviously have a lot better of a battery life and that going with the M1 Max option won't have as big of a sacrifice when it comes to that battery life. But if you're thinking of getting the 14 inch size with the Max processor, that might be something to keep in mind overall. Some of the other aspects to talk about when it comes to the design though is the keyboard. You might notice that the keyboard this year has like a bit of a contrast to the rest of the body, having like this kind of black surrounding to it. And some people really like it and others don't really. Personally, I think it looks super sleek. I love it and I do understand the arguments that like in some scenarios it makes it harder to see the gap in between the keys and might make it a bit harder to type on. But from like a visual perspective and even from a functional one, I personally don't notice any difference. And generally speaking, the keyboard is really, really good and Apple has fixed all the issues that, are, that were really, really big talk a few years ago. On each side of the keyboard, you're gonna find a six speaker system that has two tweeters and four woofers that give you 80% more bass than before and also supports spatial audio, as well as three studio quality mics. And when it comes to like the actual use, the best experience that you're gonna get from a speaker perspective is obviously on the MacBook Pro 16 inch. And I'll say that even though there is like a noticeable improvement of speakers in the MacBook Pro 14 inch, at like the very, very highest volume, I did notice like a bit of a rattle in the actual body of the computer. So I just thought I'd mention that. But typically I would say if you're like between like 80% and under, these speakers sound really, really good for the size and are amongst the best out there. Something else that also really contributes to the overall performance from the CPU and GPU perspective, as well as the internal memory though, is just how fast it is. The unified memory has a max bandwidth of 400 gigabytes per second and the internal storage that you can spec up up to 8 terabytes has a speed of 7.4 gigabytes per second which is absolutely insane. I would say for photographers out there that is going to be a huge benefit if you're transferring and exporting large batch files and for video editors out there as well transferring from your card to computer is going to be super super fast and I deal with file sizes that are huge each day and Thunderbolt is something that I fully rely on, otherwise transfers could take hours. And so that is also something to consider when you're specking out this computer, how much you wanna spend on the internal storage because that is an area that can really add up. So with all that power that this computer is able to offer, paired with the fast storage, the good battery life, the no compromise performance on the go, as well as the XDR display, this really is the total package. And if anybody's looking for a MacBook Pro right now, coming from a previous generation, I would say absolutely go ahead and get this because there's nothing that you really should be waiting for. Of course, there's gonna be new MacBooks every single year, but unlike previous years where I felt like the performance was not exactly adequate for what we were paying for, and I was always waiting for them to really fix the problems with the MacBook lineup, this right here is one that I can truly say is going to be a performer for many years to come, and it makes me excited for Apple's professional lineup. Just to sum things up, this is the MacBook that I've been waiting for for so many years, and I don't really have that many complaints, aside from the fact that the M1 Max processor is probably a bit better suited to the 16 inch model because the 14 inch does get a little bit warmer, but from a power perspective, it was still able to deliver it, and I did feel like I got my money's worth. As always though, if you guys go ahead and drop a like on this video, I would really appreciate that and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next one.